All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Creative Pathways Talk. I am your host, Jalisha Bass, and today I'll be hosting for all of you. We're so excited to have all of you here. Um, so for today's talk, we'll have Brian DeLumpa. He is a photographer and graphic designer originally from California. His photo designs a hybrid skill. I'm sorry, y'all. His photo design hybrid skill has allowed him to work with notable organizations such as the NHL, the Oakland Raiders. Um, also, a central theme of Brian's photography is a diverse cultural representation, which he hopes will inspire new creators, especially those of color. Brian will also have an open discussion with us today with his experience in graphic design and professional sports and his creative thought process behind some of his favorite photo shoots. So I'll welcome to the screen, Brian. Hey, what's going on? Hi. How are you doing? How have you been doing since this big storm? <laughs> I don't know how big of a storm it was, but, you know, for Californians and for Texans, it was uh, it was definitely different. But um, I made it out all right. Didn't lose any power. Um, just tried to stay creative and moving throughout the week. Yeah, I love that. I'm glad that you are able to still stay creative during the storm. I, have to, I was yeah. really out here lacking. I was like, I don't know what to do with my life. I can't focus on school. I can't focus on work. But that's awesome. I love that. Um, but yeah, so we'll get started. So my first question for you is, what were you like growing up? And how did you figure out that you were into photography? What was I like growing up, Tam? Um, I... I was always, you know, into some uh, artistic medium. I was always illustrating. I knew I wanted to be an artist. I think originally I wanted to actually be an animator. I wanted to work for Pixar or something. Um, but you know, as you go along, you you learn what you are actually talented at. Um, I picked up photography around 15. Uh, always, you know, kind of gravitated to that. It, it came very naturally to me. Um, moving forward, I, I think I knew that I wanted to keep photography as a passion. Um, but I knew I wanted to have a career in maybe something else so I could continue to use that as an outlet. So I went to school for design um, and that kind of brought me to where I'm at in my career now doing both photography and design. So stemmed from all the way back when I was a kid, but uh, you know, it's funny to see how things open up. All right. And why did you decide, I mean, can you tell us a little bit more about why you decided to go into design even though you were into photography? Yeah, I mean, again, I, I think I, I tried to, you know, really do photography as a career for a couple years. Um, but with any, as with any position, you know, the mm -hmm. stress that comes with the demands and the requirements from clients or whoever um, can kind of take the fun out of it. And mm -hmm. uh, photography is, you know, it's, almost sacred to me. Um, you know, it's something that I do to release and to just kind of escape. So um, I wanted to do something different, but still something creative. Uh, mm -hmm. and design just came very naturally as well. You know, like I said, I had, I had always like illustrated or stuff or something. So once I got to school, it was like, well, if not photography, then next best thing. Um, and then I fell into, you know, a lot of sports design. And so I'm working with a lot of athlete photos and stuff. So the mm -hmm. photography background kind of carried over and I still get to kind of dabble in that in my day to day career. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what type of things did you learn during school that, you know, you still use to this day? Um, <clears throat> I think school was really good. I went to uh, the University of Oregon and we had just a very broad range of, um, you know, working through like Adobe software or um, you know, other other software to just kind of get a full realm of uh, the creative industry. Um, you know, I'd been working in Photoshop for a while, but um, I didn't touch Illustrator or InDesign or anything like that until I got to school. So, um, but I definitely picked up a lot of, uh, you know, vector-based design stuff. Um, on the side, I do some uh, logo design, some web design, and those are skills that I learned uh, in school and carry with me. Mm -hmm. And so after school, how did you sort of transition into working? Like, what did that look like? Did you do like internships? Did you just start off with your own business or how, how did this come about? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if everyone has the same experience. I think a creative career leads you to just a lot of, you know, you got to say yes to a lot of opportunities and that can lead you to a lot of disappointment, but a lot of adventure too. Um, after school, I went uh, to Sydney, Australia. I did a creative internship over there for a company called Reborn. Um, they did uh, digital uh, advertising and everything. And I mean, that in itself, that was such a dream to go over there and to not only be in this whole, like, whole new world, but to be um, applying like my new knowledge, um, you know, in a real life situation. Um, so I was over there and then uh, came back and, you know, things led to another. I worked for a couple creative agencies and uh, that brought me to some bigger and better things like the Raiders. Wait, hold on. We can't just skip over this. You went to a whole new country. Like you graduated <laughs> from school and you was just like, I'm going to go to Sydney, Australia. What did your mama say? <laughs> how did this decision come about? Like people just don't do this every day. And how long were you there? Like that's crazy to me. The the interest. So I did it through. Um, God, I should remember the company. I think it was I nine. It's a uh, like global internships uh, company for college students. It's not just creative. Um, and so I was like talking to people, you know, at Oregon, trying to figure that out. I did this like last minute. This is like my last semester senior year. Um, found a company they found me i should say and uh you know the rest is kind of history it was like a 12-week internship but in that time i mean they threw me into you know real live campaigns i was working on um brands like maybelline um they did a lot of like women's cosmetics uh stuff like that so um wait, wait yeah. what were you doing with them like were you doing like photography or were you doing like design like what do you mean throwing into the real world you <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I like to think I, I can bring both skill sets to any position. Um, specifically, I was doing graphic design for them, but there was plenty of opportunities to uh, do some photography as well. So that's cool. Wow, that's crazy. Like for I don't know. I don't know if I would do that. I mean, I don't know. Did you like do you like travel abroad a lot or like what is this? Yeah, I, I, had, I had been abroad and I had moved away from, you know, home a couple times. And so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like a big culture shock. I'd actually even been to Australia before. Um, but I understand that that's a, you know, <laughs> that, that that's a big, um, you know, barrier or, or uh, obstacle for some people to overcome um, leaving the comfort of home or wherever. But, you know, I, I can't um, suggest it enough or, or you know, kind of implore people enough to really get out there because, you know, getting out of your comfort zone is actually what I've found. It's going to push you to to really, um, you know, create some things you never knew you could. Mm. I'm definitely right. I mean, after that, like, how did you start like getting gigs and stuff or getting jobs? Like, what did that process look like? Um, it's definitely about who you know. I, uh, I worked for a creative agency in San Jose, California for a while um, from, you know, people I had known back from high school and stuff. Uh, and you just got to keep pushing. You know, I, I, I was doing my photography on the side, so I think I was able to fuel myself creatively. You know, I could uh, I could work all day on design um, and maybe be sick of it by the end of the day, but then I could get off and go do a photo shoot. And it was like, that wasn't work. That was just like me getting to, you know, do something else. And it's cyclical. Um, so I was, uh, yeah, I was working for a couple creative agencies and then uh, uh, started to transition into sports a little more. And what was it like doing sports photography? Like, what was that process? Um, I sports photography, you know, I, I haven't dabbled in as much. Uh, I was a an assistant like photographer um, for the Raiders, but mainly uh, graphic design for them. I was doing a lot of social media, um, a lot of their, um, you know, web presence and everything. Uh, but it's a, you know, sports in general, if you're into it, it's a it's an exciting industry to be in. Um, you know, it's it's pretty exhilarating to see your work on on a global platform. Um, it is demanding, though. Uh, you know, fast uh, people expect a lot from you, especially with uh, timelines. You know, if you're if you're designing for a team or something, you got to get that stuff out 
you know, obviously before anyone else does. So, um, and it's an exciting, you know, kind of career, but uh, definitely comes with some some hurdles. Hurdles like what? Um, you know, I think just to be, I think personally to stand out, um, even the work that I do now for a company called Flow Sports in Austin, Texas, you know, always just to kind of be either with or ahead of the curve creatively, you know, like you don't want to be, it, it, things change so quickly, like looks, um, design tactics, techniques. Um, so staying in tune with it and, you know, just constantly growing your skill set and your portfolio, it, it can be a demand. What are ways that you do to sort of keep up with the curve? Like, how do you, how do young creatives do that? Uh, I mean, I, I'm constantly, you know, in and out of uh, design like forums. I, I follow a bunch of design pages on Instagram, on Twitter, just to get like inspiration. Um, constantly saving stuff. Uh, it's you can pull it from anywhere, um, but it's uh, yeah, it's really just about paying attention. You know, uh, look at successful campaigns, follow your favorite teams, see what they've been doing. Like, what do you like about their design, or what don't you like about their design? Um, and just being able to compare, you know, what some teams do to others. Uh, you can see a lot how, how teams carry themselves or organizations, any brand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And, you know, how did you start your own business? Like, what made you jump to that decision? Like, how did that begin? I think that kind of just fell into place naturally because I, I picked up a camera and I started you know, shooting, I have a ton of siblings. I, so I had a ton of subject matter. Uh, but uh, from there, it was just like, okay, I have an eye for this. Um, and then I guess people started requesting me to take their photo. So I was like, why not, you know, make this official or at least slap my name on some of this stuff. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just been, you know, it's been like 15 years, but um, I'm still learning every single day, like how to be a better, you know, businessman, how to be a better creative. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's all a learning process. Mm -hmm. You said people started asking you to do their photo shoots. How did you like book those gigs or how did you get more people or build a, a fan base or a following for your pictures? Um, Man, I, I don't know if I could even answer. Like, how do you build a, a following? There's 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 obviously, you know, like there are techniques that you can do and I, I don't even consider myself to have a following, but I'm glad that people saw something and see something in my work um, that they enjoy. That's all I've ever wanted to do with my photography uh, is just bring emotion out of people uh, or make people think. And uh, so for you know anyone to approach me and um, ask me to take their photo or to work with me, collaborate with me, feature me, um, it's honestly a blessing every time. I love that. And for people who are young creatives who are just getting into the field, now what are how do you how do you know how to ask somebody to pay you to do your work for photography? Or how do you sort of like set your rates? <laughs> Man, that, that that is a tough one. You know, that's still something I battle with. I think it's I think it's a um, dilemma for creatives like across the board just feeling like you almost don't deserve what you know you're worth because you're so excited to get a creative opportunity. Like, you know, for years I would undersell myself, um, under, you know, undercut my, my rates because I was so excited that I had an opportunity to have paid work. Um, it took me a long time to learn and understand that really what you're doing is, setting yourself up for, I guess, just plateauing in the, in the long run, because you can never really, you know, um, evolve from that, from that point. If you're just going to continue to confine yourself to, you know, what you think people are going to accept or be willing to pay you, you got to look at it from a place of, you know, self-worth, you know, it's like you came to me because you like what you saw. So understandably, you should be willing to compensate for that. You know, this is work. This isn't just fun for me. This isn't hanging out on the computer. You know, this is 
a lifestyle and it's my passion. Um, one of my favorite quotes is, um, and I'm gonna forget it now, I think it's Henry Winter, but an artist is not paid for his labor, but for his vision. And I, I try to carry that with me through any, you know, any, any creative endeavor that I do. Um, as artists, we are, you know, we're gifted with, with vision and it's important to not forget that, you know, we have a skill set and that can carry you through life if you let it. Definitely. And even with that work, you know, like you said before, which you wrote in your bios, that you really wanted to inspire you know, people of color to sort of get into the creative field as well. You know, what are some of the ways that you do that or that you wish to hope to inspire the people? Um, I think through photography, that's, you know, photography has always been my, my voice. Um, I feel like I could put my thoughts into a photo better than I could probably articulate them sometimes. Um, and I guess maybe a couple of years ago, I realized that that was a platform to also just uh, kind of, you know, cultivate some more diversity in, in the creative, um, in the creative like realm, I guess. Uh, I follow a lot of portrait feature accounts and you go to any one and you'll see it's predominant, uh, predominantly white. Um, and you know, that's, it's something that I kind of approach with my work. I, I want to celebrate diversity and I want to celebrate the beauty of diversity in other cultures. And I think through photography and, you know, putting my skill and talent, uh, into that effort, that's one way that I try to engage other creatives, um, people, creatives of color. Uh, younger creatives of color who may be starting out, you know, I, I hope they are looking at my my feed and being like, wow, okay, like, look at all these people who look like me and all these people who a lot of them are creative themselves. Um, so it's really just about seeking out, um, you know, cultural diversity, but also I think we have a responsibility to put it out there as well. Right, definitely. And in doing that, you know, just for like more, I guess, personalized questions on photography, but like, how do you make sure, how do you make your models feel more comfortable doing a shoot? That's actually, I'm stoked you asked that because I, I didn't know how to for years. And I still, any anyone who shot with me has heard this like speech that I give. And it's that I I don't give, you know, much direction. I just kind of let you do your thing and, and I'll kind of, you know, I'll be like, yo, that looks good. Um, but I have come up with some like tactics that you can do, you know, in a photo shoot to kind of like lighten the mood. I always bring portable speakers with me. I let my model, uh, be the DJ. So then, you know, they're putting on their own vibes. They're kind of feeling the music that really breaks the ice a lot, especially if you haven't met your model before. Um, you know, I think it's just really about how you carry yourself to be professional, have, have a conversation with your model, you know, approach them respectfully, um, you know, you can slide into DMs while being respectful <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, form a relationship with your models, um, form trust, um, show that you can you can carry yourself as a professional and, you know, also through your work as well. Um, but, yeah, I mean, there's there's something really great about uh, especially the community in Austin. There's a lot of people out there willing to collaborate um, a lot of like uh, TFP trade for print work. So just mutual swap, nobody pays. Um, and, you know, I got to say like my, my photography portfolio has taken off like vastly in Austin uh, because of that. So if you're looking to do photo shoots, you know, start reaching out. There's plenty of, uh, there's an Austin Models Facebook page, um, you know, search, uh, hashtag like Austin models, ATX models, find people who want to work. Tea. I didn't even know those existed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. Resources, yeah. But like also, what are like some good places to do photography shoots in Austin? Like if you just want to like start taking pictures or bring out some friends or something. Uh, I mean, kind of all about you know that's that's where your eye comes in um there are obviously there are a lot of like popular photo spots around austin that a lot of people go to and use all the time i try to you know find like 
crazy places that nobody's ever seen. I'm constantly like looking over my shoulder while I'm driving, almost getting in an accident because I like see a spot that I'm like, I got to go shoot there later on. But, um, you know, just go exploring, you know, uh, go drive in, find a place. Um, you can make a lot out of a little. That's crazy. And when, especially like when you're going to like all of these different places, like what do you find is like the best use for lighting when you're doing for photography shoots outside? Yeah, um, I've worked with uh, natural light and artificial. Um, you know, I, I used to have big old strobes and everything. Uh, past couple of years, I've been working with natural light. So you pretty much find me shooting in the same two hour slot, you know, before sunset. Um, that's when I really like to work, uh, you know, golden hour rule and everything. But, you know, if you get to know your camera and, and some of the capabilities of these cameras these days, you can shoot in any light. Um, just got to really got to, you know, know your skill set. That's interesting. And how do you sort of make like how do you sort of create like an interesting composition whenever you're doing these shoots? Um. <clears throat> I think a lot of it is maybe based on the concept, um, you know, a kind of like a uh, hidden like fact about my work. A lot of it's based off lyrics. Um, and so I'll, I'll like hear lyrics that inspire me and I'm like, all right, how would I, how would I like conceptualize that into a photo? So some of the time, you know, the, the posture or the position, the pose is kind of already like spoken for, but you know, if I'm, if I'm posing models um, or, composing the shot it's kind of just you got to go into it thinking like what is your main focus what are you wanting your audience to focus on is it the eyes are you wanting to highlight the outfit or is it not even really the model is it the model within the atmosphere um it's a it's a lot of you know pre-production so to speak um mm -hmm. on your end uh kind of like solidifying your vision before you even take a shot mm -hmm. So what is like your pre photo shoot sort of process look like? I don't know if I have one, to be honest. Um, I guess like, you know, like I said, a lot of them are based off lyrics. So I'll, I'll be bumping that song, like on the way to the shoot, getting, getting pumped up. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, no, I, I just get genuinely excited to, to always go out and shoot. I love that. And then do you have any like generally good tips for capturing photos or? Oh, um, I mean, it, it may be like basic advice, really, you know, photographers learn the exposure triangle, um, uh, you know, ISO aperture. And now, of course, I'm going to forget it. Um, shutter, shutter speed, um, really learning those and learning how they uh, like coincide with each other, it, it just allows you to work in any um, any environment, any scenario, any light scenario, uh, and just being able to work on the fly and not being able to, or not having to like really think about it. If it's just kind of like second nature and which can be tough, it's, it's kind of like math and I hate math, I have my whole life, but learning the exposure triangle can really bring you far um, in your photography and just creating a great image. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. I feel like, I mean, how does that apply in music photography? I know you did a lot of music photography. So how, how can that apply there? Yeah, that's actually, that's a great question. Uh, music photography is really fun for me because it's such a, it's such a challenge and you never know what you're going to get. And that's a great example of when the exposure triangle and your knowledge of it comes in handy because, you know, mm -hmm. I'll show up to a venue or something. I don't know what the lights are going to be like. I don't know how much room I'm going to have, if any, in front of the stage. So I have to get there and then be like, OK, what exposure do I need? Uh, how much motion do I want in my shots? Uh, you know, if I'm like close at all, do I want it to be uh, focused on just the singer? Um, and so, yeah, again, that's a really great example of when your knowledge of the triangle can uh, help you out of some some tough situations. And music is a great example of you just never know what to expect. So to be honest, I just um, I set what I think 
you know, this, everything might look like. And then throughout the, um, throughout the set while they're performing, it's kind of just going with it, just running. Mm -hmm. And that makes a lot of sense. Well, I appreciate all of the tips. Um, also, I know you wanted to show everyone some of your work and so they go through a um, photo shoot. Yeah. How you did. So I can do that. I've actually always kind of wanted to do a little tutorial, share some tricks. So I figured this would be a cool example. So let me, uh, let me show you. I'll throw it to you. All right. Cool, so y'all can see my screen, yeah? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so we're gonna start out. Um, I'm gonna teach you guys like, uh, or share a couple like tricks that I do with my photos um, to kind of help bring them to life a little bit. Um, so let's start with this first one. This is probably the trick that I use the most. Um, this is actually a photo of my beautiful sister. Um, so, you know, basic photo, so to speak. Um, what I always really focus on is the eyes. Uh, they can bring out just so much life in your subject uh, and really just create a completely different feel to it. And with having said that, that's why you kind of want to, again, be thinking of what your image is going to look like before you take it. So, you know, I knew I wanted to get a lot of light into her eyes so I would have a lot to work with in Photoshop. Um, so the trick that I'm going to show you guys is dodging and burning. Um, you can use, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to be using a lot of like hotkeys that are, you know, relevant to that. So I'm sorry if you're on something else or, um, and I, I think the hotkeys are the only ones I know, but um, <clears throat> you can come over here to this. It's your dodge and burn tool. And normally what I do is I create another layer. Um, if I'm on the, I'll delete this one real quick, but if I'm on the background, it's gonna be Command J and that'll create another layer and get rid of that one. So by creating another layer, obviously you're not damaging the original photo, you're just working on top of it. Now with my uh, dodge tool, I'm gonna to come in and just start to kind of bring out the colors of her iris. And as you get better with it, you can start using, you know, different opacities of the brush to kind of get it like fine tuned to where you want. Um, I have it on 100 right now, so it's going to come out, you know, pretty harsh. Touch up the sky a little bit. And I should note, you want this to be on midtones. Uh, you can also you know, dodge and burn shadows and highlights, but those are going to give you a different look. Midtones is normally where I go. Now, so we have the eyes done, but that looks a little, you know, surreal for me. So that's why we put it on another layer. Um, if we bring down the opacity over here, you can click and drag. And a lot of photography is just about subtlety. So I did that little trick, but by bringing it down a little bit, it's not as much of a change or it's not as drastic of a change, I should say. And it still like brings a lot of life you know, to her face, to the image. Um, and I think this was the original, you know, photo that I, or this was the final photo that I did. So you can really see the difference. And, you know, it's great to, when you're shooting, be trying to, you know, put light in your, in your model's eyes, have them be looking, you know, towards the light source. Um, so you can get these great catch lights and highlights in there. Um, another trick, I wanted to show you guys um, to get kind of like a, a bit of a sharper image. What I do is um, I will come into Lightroom and if you don't use Lightroom, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, Lightroom and Photoshop together are an incredible um, duo and I, I, I create a lot working back and forth between the two. So what I do uh, in Lightroom is I will, you know, kind of get my, um, say I'm just wanting to edit it a little bit, got the color right, but I want it to like pop a little more. What I did here was command um, apostrophe, or you can come up to 
I believe there is. I'm not sure what the uh, what the move is up there, but command apostrophe will give you a uh, um, a, vo a virtual copy, um, and so again, you're not like damaging the original image. So what I'm going to do is edit it the same way. So these are the same exact photo, but what I'm going to pay attention to is right here, texture and clarity. For one of them. I'm going to make it really soft. So look as I, you know, drag the texture, you can see the difference in how the photo like uh, really takes. Um, and so for one, I'm going to really kind of soften it up. And for the second one, I'm going to bump that up, that texture up a little bit you Can use a little clarity. Uh, not too much. The texture can actually go kind of wild on you. So now we have two images, right? Now I'm going to export this. Pull this up. So now you can see a little bit. I have the two images. One's a little sharper, one's a little softer. What I do from here is I'm going to pull the softer image into Photoshop. And then I'm going to pull the sharper one in on top of that. Now, one of the best things to learn in Photoshop is uh, masks, layer masks. Um, and so hopefully some of you all have a, a background in that. But and I'm, I wasn't really sure what, again, what the uh, long um, route was here. I believe it's layer mask. But what I'm going to do uh, is hold Option. And I'm going to click this down here. That's going to make the sharp layer up top disappear, but it's still there. So this black layer mask is there. I'm going to paint on with a white brush all the spots that I kind of want her to be sharper. So it's kind of just a little cheat code of creating that, you know, um, soft and sharp focus look that you can get from some really great lenses. Um, I normally do the facial, the facial features a lot. A little bit on the hair, you, you kind of want to be careful. Hair can get um, a little over, like, a little too sharp. You can even do it on the ground to give her a little bit of context. And again, it's subtle, but it kind of helps you create that kind of buttery but sharp look. Um, and then quickly, what you can also do if you hit W, it'll bring up your uh, wand tool up here. Uh, select subject. And this normally does a really good job of selecting the subject. Um, Photoshop's come a really long way. But sometimes you might have to go in, you know, it actually did it pretty perfectly this time. Get rid of some areas that you don't want. What you can do from here, though, is I'm going to create a new layer from my selection. So on Mac, it's Command J. So I've separated her from the background. So you know she's on her own. But what I can do now is create a uh, adjustment layer, brightness. You're going to go up here to adjustment layer, brightness. And if you make sure it's between the background and her, you can kind of bring down the background a little bit, and it makes her kind of pop off you know, the background because she's lighter. So again, these are just a few little tips um, that I've been using for a couple years to really kind of bring some um, some vibrance to my photos. And uh, I like to think they kind of set my work apart a little bit. So thanks for letting me do that. Oh, OK, OK. I really love this, honestly. I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have known at all. So I appreciate like I big brain thinking on <laughs> like honestly like youtube like I, I tell people all the time even if you're just like hey how do you you know remove hair or something everything is on youtube you can find whatever you want to know but then share that knowledge help other people evolve do you have any like favorite like photographer youtubers i don't really you know i don't really follow um to me, like photographers specifically, but um, 
I'm definitely like saving tutorial videos all the time, uh, even just to reference uh, and go back to for different uh, Photoshop techniques. That's awesome. Well, if y'all have any questions for Brian, go ahead and start putting those in the chat. Um, I do have one more question before we move on to questions from the chat. And that is, if, what would you tell your younger self 15 years ago? Oh, man. Um, you know, I think I would say to myself, to my younger self and to any, any young creatives, uh, you know, if you feel, if you like already know that this is what you're about, just follow that voice, uh, you know, because I, I really can't envision another scenario where I'd be happy in life if I wasn't doing this. Um, and with that came a lot of struggles, you know, like being creative, being into, um, you know, art and design and, and different types of music. You know, sometimes I struggled with um, people identifying me as whitewashed or not black enough or, you know, for not being into the stereotypical things that um, minorities should be into, so to speak. Um, and so my advice is to just not, you know, not listen to any of that. If you if you feel a calling within you to be creative or to be innovative, you have to follow that because chances are it's going to be calling out to you your entire life and you're going to wish you had done something, you know, that you really were passionate about. Um, but also it's it's just not worth fighting, you know, what you were really meant to do. Uh, and so even on my toughest days when I, you know, wish I made more money or I, you know, was in a, you know, maybe a more promising career. Um, I, I can't ever like end a day and, and really say that I'm upset with where I'm at. So, you know, follow your voice. Period. I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing. All right. Bet. So we'll jump right into questions from the audience. Uh, Sean said, I noticed that you do music, sports, landscape, and portraits. What is your favorite subject to shoot? Oh, boy. Um, man, music is really fun. I, I got to say, like, I always say that um, music photography was my way of, like, being a part of the music scene without being a musician. Like, I would love to be a musician, but I'm not talented at all. Uh, but once I picked up the camera, I was able to like be a part of that culture and feel like I produced something at the show and brought something from the show. Um, so music is probably my my favorite, my most natural like um, you know medium that I like gravitate towards. But I love working with people. I love doing portraits. Um, there's a there's a special connection that happens when you you know create with someone and you're both proud of something that you did. That's awesome. Y'all talked about your shirt as well. Could you explain to us a little bit more about it? Yeah. Um, man, I meant to even like look up the company. I think it's called Legendary Roots uh, with a Z, uh, black owned company. And I saw this shirt and I was like, yeah, I got, I got to have that because <laughs> uh, I'm a big like rock and metal fan too. So I was like, that's pretty dope. And it, it's always fun to see people like do the double take. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Man, that makes sense. I love that. Uh, Tin said, what are your tips for developing your style as a new photographer? Um, I would just uh, try everything, you know, like if, if you really don't know like what you're interested in shooting, try it all. Um, do car photography, uh, try weddings, um, try music, because you'll very quickly learn what you're not good at. I like I learned plenty of stuff that I'm not good at shooting um, and then very just as quickly you'll learn the things that you're either really passionate about and maybe you're not that good at it yet but you're willing to work towards it um, or you'll just pick something up like that. That's awesome. Awesome and Jennifer asks uh, what tools or devices do you consider must have while working on a project? That's tough. Um, I mean, I guess aside from my like my software, like uh, you know, I work in the Adobe Suite every minute, every day. Uh, 
<clears throat> other than that, I always need music. I mean, always have music playing uh, that, that really sets my move and, and gets me flowing creatively. Um, I think maybe on a more like mental level, I, I always just got to have that vision. You know, if I'm working with a client, I like to be concise with them. Like, what are they expecting? I try to keep up with them along the way. I'm like, hey, here's a little preview. Is this the direction that you were thinking? Um, so vision and, and you know, uh, kind of a, a blueprint is, is good to have. Uh, you could save yourself a lot of backtracking. That makes a lot of sense. How do you blueprint? Or what does that mean? Uh, it's easy. It's easier to do it on your own, obviously. Like I can plan a, a photo shoot, you know, for as long as I want until I feel it's ready to execute. Um, with clients, though, it's all about communication. Um, you know, I think a lot of non-creative people, uh, who a lot of them will be your clients. They don't understand the creative process and how much effort really goes into it. And they do think it's just like, a, you know, hop in there and just Photoshop it. Um, and so just, again, like knowing your worth and kind of um, standing firm for yourself, um, setting expectations, letting people know like what your workflow is like, what your timeline is going to be. Um, with confidence, like what your experience is, it's okay to say like, hey, this is my first wedding, um, you know, because that sets the expectation um, and, and you're being clear and concise up front. Um, not to say that you're gonna butcher it, but um, being up front with clients helps you lay out the project um, and it, it saves surprises on both sides and the surprises can really hurt sometimes. So definitely suggest it. Do you have an example of a surprise that hurt you? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to throw any clients under the bus today. You don't got to say no names. We won't tell. I mean, just, you know, definitely like having whole, doing whole productions and having clients decide that they didn't like how it turned out and then you don't get paid. Um, it's, you know, creatives are normally the ones who, who end up getting a, uh, Messed up in the end. Yeah, I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Ricardo asks, what type of camera do you have and how many lenses do you typically use for a shoot? Um, so I, I shot Nikon um, basically my entire career. Um, and I only just switched over to Sony. I have a Sony A6400 that I got probably coming up a year and a half. Um, so switching over from DSLR to a mirrorless camera, it actually wasn't that bad. Um, and it's it's crazy what these cameras are doing these days because my camera is, you know, the size probably smaller than my phone. And um, it, which compared to my other, my Nikon, which was like a brick, but the work that it puts out is amazing. Um, I'm not actually the biggest gearhead. I think it's just because I grew up like only having like a couple lenses and so I just made do. So I've never really like, you know, constantly been cycling out gears and lenses. Um, right now I'm in love with the 85 millimeter uh, Sony. I'm uh, been shooting with that. Uh, and I've been shooting with the kit 1650 lens that comes with it. Um, but I guess if I were gonna recommend it, I like shooting both wide and like very tight uh, detailed portraits. So I would say I like to have a wide angle lens and a good prime like in my little arsenal. Okay, okay, I love that, I love that. That's so awesome. And then Tin had a question about how do you balance time between administrative work and creative work? Um, as far as like administrative being like my full-time stuff? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I guess it's just all about balance, you know? Um, that I, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but that's why I kept photography on the side. Um, you know, as with any passion, you can find time to do that if it's something that means that much to you. So uh, I think 
I'm blessed that I get to do creative work no matter what I'm doing. If I'm doing administrative work or if I'm doing freelance work or, you know, just passion work on the side, I think just genuinely loving, you know, the work that I get to do um, helps me find that balance. Obviously, some things take priority and that's something that you need to learn as a creative. You can't always be doing the things that you want to work on just because they're fun. Um, you got to you got to eat. So uh, it's really just about priority and balance. Okay, that's real life. Crazy. Uh, Cynthia said, how do you handle stress when a project isn't going the way you thought it would? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, it's, it's all right to like step away from a project for a little bit. Uh, provided that, you know, the timeline that you and your client have agreed upon allows it. Um, but yeah, definitely the more you look at it, you know, whether it's photography or design, sometimes I'll just get so like upset and I'll just start questioning, am I even <laughs> talented at all? Cause this is not like happening, uh, you know, how I wanted to at all. But, um, you know, I think removing yourself from it and coming back to it, like even a day later, having new eyes on it, you can either, you might just come back to it and blow it up and be like, yeah, this sucks. I'm going to start over. But just that, you know, that motion of like getting to the next step um, can kind of be cathartic. So. I love that. That's, that's, but all right. Well, that is not all we have. Jennifer asks, um, have you ever considered creating your YouTube tutorials, creating your own YouTube tutorials? I think um, I think like inevitably down the road, I will, uh, because I mean, this was so fun today and that was legitimately like the first live or anything like tutorial I've ever given. Um, I'm always happy to like share, you know, photo tips and everything with people, but I've just never put forth the effort to make like full videos of it. Uh, but like I was saying, like I live off those and they help me with my work so much. So if I can turn around and you know, influence somebody else's work or help them learn a new tactic. Uh, you know, that's my responsibility. So, yeah, I, I guess uh, sometime in the future, I'll definitely have um, a series going. All right, but I'm I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> and then, you know, you should definitely come teach some classes at E4U. We have a lot of photographers. That'd be dope. That'd be in dope. the group. And now I said it live, so it has to has to happen. It has to happen now. <laughs> this is approved right here. We already know. I'm gonna tell Carl today, <laughs> just so you know. If you get that email, it's yeah. there. but um, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. Do you have any other lasting advice that you didn't get to talk about that you want to talk about? No. Uh, one more time, thank you to E4. Um, I was so grateful to learn about you guys from a coworker a while ago and, and just getting to work with you guys. I think the work that you do is really important. And I think, um, you know, everyone watching, everyone um, trying to find their, their way into a creative career, you're just as important. And uh, I definitely, you know, want to see more of us in this industry. Awesome. All righty. Thank you so much. Um, so if you guys enjoyed the talk today, we do these talks every Wednesday at 12. Uh, so you can join us for more creative talks with people in the creative industry. Also, if you're interested in any of the jobs that we've been talking about here on the Creative Pathways podcast, then you guys can join the E4U CLA program, which is the Creative Leadership Academy, where you'll have the opportunity to explore all of these job skills and build skill sets in these things. So you can sign up for these on e4youth.org. Also, if you are other creatives in the field, and you're interested in helping other creatives of color sort of get into the field, then don't forget to donate at e4youth.org slash donate. We appreciate you guys so much, and we'll see you guys next week on Wednesday at 12. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.